you wouldn't be in there because you were in New York City High School. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I was out dunking basketballs and steel chains back then in those days. <laughs> <laughs> steel chains. <laughs> we had steel chains. They didn't rip them down back there where no, I came didn't. from. No. And the girls dunked basketballs with us too outside. Oh yeah. Everybody, in the, when it's nice out, everybody comes out. Stickball, basketball. Yes, I got beat quite a few times and my mother used to tell me I don't want you out on the street in New York City with 7,000 people and cars and buses and taxis. So I stole the broom, we cut it off, no, we burned it because we didn't have a saw back there in the hood back there in those days. <laughs> burned it. And uh, like an idiot, I'm 6'4", and I'm going to be the catcher, and the guy pops me in the left eye and almost put it out. Oh, try to explain that to your mother when you're down at the Lincoln Hospital in New York City. Scary. I survived, though. What was the, what was the high school you went to, Bob? Morris High School. Six years behind Colin Powell, and everyone asks me all the time. That's ask. Uh, did you know Colin? <laughs> did you know Colin Powell? Wait a minute. There's six million of us. We didn't have school buses back then in those days. We had a walk. We rode the L. We rode the subway. And sometimes you took three transfers on a public bus to go to school one way. Or you walk. Or you walk. And it was every day. Nobody complained. That's, you That's become, what you had to do. You become acclimated as part of your life. I can see Bob running the streets with a stickball bat. I was born 6'4 and 99 pounds. When I sneeze, you can see my, my ribs. Yeah, I used to save them on x-rays when I had to have my physical once a year. Man, when we, when, we, when we come in here and flip through the books, because obviously me and Sam are out, uh, those, are the, those are like the golden days. Those were the golden days. And they go back far. I mean, Jason had those from, geez, I don't even, way back. To the 50s. To the 50s. To the 50s. Well. Jason's dad and I would go back a long, long way. We used to have a lot of sword fighting. I used to listen to Beethoven, Bach, Tchaikovsky when I was going to the schools in the hood in New York City, and uh, he was listening to some CW. Uh, you know, I even knew what a do -si do was, and that wasn't a deer either back then. <laughs> <laughs> so how's everything going, Bob? How's yeah, God is good. Having fun every day. Um, Try to stay optimistic in this great city of Niagara Falls. It's very, we, we're, we're getting ready to, uh, <clears throat> we're talking a little bit about it today, about uh, beginning to get a steering committee together for placing Niagara Falls on the map as one of the world wonders. So, basically, we, we want to make sure that everyone that, uh, that sees the show can go online and vote for it. you got to register. You have to actually nice. fill out some information. They're not going to give you any junk mail. But come the next tourism board meeting, we'll get into that a little bit more. The paper will bring it out, where to go. But uh, that's one more nice positive thing for the city. To be. It's one more badge. It's one more way of marketing the community. It's nice to have that as, as you know, it, another hat. It sounds very positive. I can remember after leaving New York City at the age of 20 and going to the Air Force and traveling around the world. And when I came to Niagara Falls from Southeast Asia, during the Vietnam era. I was impressed, and when you leave New York City and 42nd Street and the uh, Twin Towers and the uh, Empire State Building, which was my Boy Scout headquarters in the basement, I was very impressed with Niagara Falls and every place I went in the world for 22 years. If people didn't know physically where it was located, they knew about Niagara Falls. No matter what. They never heard of New Fane or Wilson or Straw Point or Buffalo. They thought that was something that you ate or caribou. <laughs> but when you mentioned Niagara Falls, they, know they knew exactly about all the water in the world going off the side of a mountain. And it was, I was impressed with the 120,000 people who were here back then in those days. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've lost some population due to everything. And it's the same. It's the same in, in every community where everything we were talking a little bit before on the economic crisis in, in every area, in every aspect of every government, state, city, federal. But uh, one thing about this town, this town's always been proud, always strong, and uh, we're glad that you're you're volunteering to serve hey, this community. You. Thank you very much. And Bob does. His we're, salary. We're all big fans of Bob Anderson. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here. We'll be right back, and we're at the Orchard Grill on 1215 Main Street, and we'll be right back with the Little Italy Niagara Show. Welcome back to the Little Italy Niagara Show. We're here with Steve Fournier. Steve. Jerry, always a pleasure. Always, man. Uh, owner of the Orchard Grill, councilman extraordinaire. That's <laughs> it, he is. 
And uh, we, we just got through talking about Bob. Bob loves the fish fry here. No. Uh, almost every Friday Bob's coming in. And he always brings a nice little crowd with him. I don't know who's paying, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's like entourage. He's got his, he's got a whole exactly, section. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, we love the place. And, and we were kind of talking about some of the yearbooks. And that's always been a couple of drinks and a laugh at the bar for the yearbooks, isn't it? Everybody yeah. loves that, don't they? You'd be surprised how many people actually will Thumb sit there them. and <laughs> laugh at each other. You know, from, you know, 20 years ago they see each other. Uh, and it's we, good conversational. Piece. Exactly. We were going through, uh, you know, obviously looking for ours and stuff, but going through ones the same year, like at Niagara Falls High School, because we went to a cell. Flipping through, seeing people that we know and then laugh and the bet, you know, who's the class clown and all oh, that. Yeah. Uh, unbelievably funny. It is good time. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the place is located at 1215 Main Street and 282-8079 is a number to get a hold of Steve here. What's the normal business hours? Normal business hours from Monday through, usually Monday through Thursday, 11 to 2.30. And I usually shut down between 2.30 to 5 o'clock just to get everything rolling again. And uh, we close regular bar time, two o'clock in the morning. And on uh, weekends uh, from 11 to two, three in the morning on Friday, and from six o'clock till three in the morning on Saturday. Closed on Sunday. That's the kid's day. That's, that's right. And are you all hockeyed up? You already played, honey? Yeah. You already did? You're up next? Yeah, then we usually have a full schedule. Where, where do they play at? On uh, Niagara University. On oh, Niagara University? One day, they want to, I want them to play at Hyde Park. That's one of the things I'm trying to do. <laughs> if, they, if they watch the council meetings, you understand. You know, I'm surprised that we don't, that that just isn't like a Pepsi Center or something like that. That to see all the kids and everybody, we got a great spot right there. It, nothing a, against them, you. I mean, they, they put a lot of, that was, that was literally nothing, and they built that into what it is. And, uh, but I like to see, because you have skate nights, stuff like that. I like to see right here in the city. Well, most of us that, that are still skating now have kids. That's where we all started at Hyde because right. there was no idea. Right, know, that's right. what I'm saying. And, yeah, that's and new. A lot of us look at it now and say, well, what's going on? They have no things for the kids. I would love to bring my kids to Hyde Park Ice Rink. I would love them to learn how to play hockey there. Just, they really don't have that, that going since we gave it up, since the cities gave it up and let someone else run it. You don't see the programs. Well, yeah. Hopefully, I'd like to see you know that Absolutely. that get done again for sure. And, you know, and and we were kind of talking about Bob with Bob before about just the economics of the area and stuff like that. When it comes to the kids, that's one of the first things that you, you get touched with because you know everybody has kids and, and you want them to stay in the community when they graduate from high school and when they're when they're growing up like yours are. You, you know, you want to do those things and. You know, hopefully you can do them all within the city that you live in, but you know sometimes you gotta travel outside. And we've done some things in the past that stop us from doing it, but <laughs> it's sort of funny because uh, I think two weeks ago my daughter looks at me and says, "Dad, I want to go to NU." I was like, "Okay," just so she would be close to you know her family, and you know, and she's ten years old and already thinking that. Let's just hope that mindset stays there. And she great. She sure. has a job when she gets older and can stay in our community because. I think they'd be a valuable asset, just like every other child in the city. Which what we always hope is that our, you know, our kids don't end up going to North Carolina or somewhere like that. There's a lot to offer here with the falls and the casino now and everything that we have. Sure. And we just always, you know, like I said before, when I, I started getting involved, it's like I have four years. My daughter's going to be a senior next year at Niagara 